I congratulate you for the privilege to join Shinwa Shimolowo in his explosive discoveries of solutions to the problem facing our nation, Nigeria. Shinwa Shimolowo is the multi-talented young man with great message of self-discoveries and God purpose. His uncommon attitude towards challenges gives him insight to a series of discoveries. He is a dynamic youth leader, an author, a seasonal motivational speaker, a visionist with great idea, a business management expert and CEO of Sion Investments. In this series, he leads the entire nation to discover the root cause of Nigerian problem and the solution to the national problem. Why are government lack solution? Who are then the solutions? Why are they ineffective? How can they be effective? Join him as he unfolds this in this teaching. There was a young man who has a business that's part to find assignment as the future leaders. This was David's secret of victory. He paddled through frustration of Saul's government. He kept his mind not on the problem or the throne, but on his assignment. He remembered God as choosing him as solution. The youth in like manner should remember that God has revealed the solution secret into their hands. And if they will focus their mind on this assignment, the grace of God will surely be sufficient to paddle through any characterized frustration of the government. This message might not be for all the youth, but I'm sure it's a wake-up call for the youth that once had a dream but got slumber and courage to those that kept the flag of the assignment flying in their heart. There are many youth doing David's time. They were all called future leaders, but God only found David right for the post. This is not by any standard or race, it is simply by the right heart. In 1 Samuel 16, 7, God chose David because of the content of his heart. Let us examine the content of David's heart in 1 Samuel 17, 32. David said to Saul, Let no man lose heart on account of this Philistine. Your servant will go and fight him. David did not risk his life because he wanted to get rich. He did confronted Goliath of economic starvation, limitation, scarcity, hunger, and social imbalance facing his country because he realized his assignment to liberate the people. God is in the right serious business of building such leaders for this nation within the set of the youth. If you are a youth and you have been perverted by the love of money, fame, and power, you are already disqualified because a time is coming in this nation that who becomes the leader will not be determined by what political party you belong or who is your godfather or how much money you can throw around or how much lies you can fabricate in grammar but by the content of your heart and what effort you have done it is important for me to answer the question that many young people ask in clarification of this subject can we ever get to the positions to make a change the youth need not to wait until they become the governor or president David didn't wait until he became the king before he faced Goliath. It is the problem you solve now that will qualify you for the post. In 1 Samuel 17.34, David used the past unrecognized effort as his CV to qualify him for the national assignment. He said, When I watched over my father's sheep, I confronted and killed bears and lions to protect the sheep. That reference gave him opportunity to the corridor of power. Not only that, he also received people's approval to rule them. The post does not make the leader, the leader makes the post. That's a test thing for me to encourage the youth against violence. If you have been involved in violence as a means to fight for the right of your generation, drop the weapon because you have only given the devil more opportunities to achieve the killing mission. Instead of violence, dialogue in peace. Freedom is not by violence, it is by readiness. Maybe you are asking, when will the time come? Can we continue to endure the hardship? The time is right now. God is waiting to empower some youth. I think the problem is, how many youth ask the right mindset? Has devil not succeeded in disfocusing great number of youth through social imbalance, hunger, unemployment, poverty, and engage in destroying the nation and humanity for the sake of selfish living? Many of our youth are forced to go the devil's way. The young ladies are sleeping with their father's mate for money. And the young men will do anything including killing for money. If after this message you still continue this act, this message will stand to condemn you. To help the youth solve the problem of this nation, parent, you have work to do. I have mentioned several times in my public speech that the youth should not depend on the government because the government are seeing the youth as a rival and they know that it is only at their state of degeneration they can use them as machineries to implement their own mission. For example, if the youth are well educated and employed, who will they use as thug to cause political pandemonium? 
who will they use for political assassination or election disorder? A state governor said he wanted to make the state a mega city and started making life more miserable for the poor people by destroying their petty business without providing them succor. And he left the oppression of the Agbero and the tout on Tosh and he said he's building a mega city. He quite know the hard work of the Agbero in achieving a mega city, yet he can't eradicate them because they had the machinery they use. They leave what should be done undone. People are crying for food, people are crying for housing, people are crying for electricity and inflation. But our government kept spending every amount of money on secondary things. I wonder how they keep their scale of preference. It is time the youth have to be set free by the truth. Nobody owns your life. Nobody owns your destiny, not the government, not the society, not even the parent. The parents are caretaker, they are not life giver. God has released your destiny in your hands. The moment the youth realize this, the day the nation began forward march to solution. When Pharaoh discovered the growth of young people in Israel, he ordered every male child born to be killed. Why? Because he knows in them lies the power of liberation. When King Herod heard of birth of a king, he began to kill every youth, young child. Why? Because he knows the restoration power lies in the young man, and that is who people are looking for as leader. In my many years search, I have discovered that power of creativity God gave the youth is able to produce solutions without depending on any force, if properly utilized with the help of the king of the universe. David did not depend on support of Ammon of Saul to fight Goliath. He only believed in his creativity and trust his God, and that is what you need to make difference as a youth. All that the youth ever needed has been given to them by God because God knows that the world and the government could be hostile. The youth only need to discover their strength and realize their assignment. My worry is that if the youth of this generation fail to heart, they will become perverted and God will count them a waste generation. I pray we will not be a waste generation. The reason of my worry is that many of the thoughts in the mind of our youth is to get money in any possible means, ride in a big cars to show off, wear designers and oppress somebody just as the politicians make show off on TV, magazines, newspaper and on the street. This madness has become way of life in Nigeria and it is spreading deep into the soil of even yet unborn child in our society. Many abnormable things have become adoptable in our land. Nigeria, let us reason well for a minute. Is it right to celebrate a man that killed fellow man to get money? Is it right to rejoice with a man that robbed fellow man to enrich himself? Is it proper to party with a man that uses other people's destiny for himself? It is only in Nigeria we never care how bad a man get the money but will praise him because of the remnant he will draw from his table. It is true that if the head is bad, the whole body is useless. The problem of this nation started from our past leaders and it has been swallowed down to the whole body, the entire nation. Can we still live a normal life in Nigeria? Can we stand to resist the evil in our land? Can we say no in a united voice to abnormality? The answer is yes if we are willing. It's also true that the politicians are having good time because they have succeeded to confuse and turn the whole nation to become a jungle. They steal our money yet they call us thieves. They kill our people yet they call us killers. And they destroy our surviving business yet they say they are helping us. Despite all this, they will still walk into our living room through the medias to humiliate us. We could not fight back because we have sold our right to them. They gave us 1000 naira, 2000 naira to buy our conscience, our right and our vote during the election. Now they are making us to pay back through our nose. We see our government as our lead, so we follow them. But this government lack creativity. The government lack application and implementation of good principle. We join advanced nations to practice democracy. And we discover that the system does not solve our problem. Why? Because we copy the system step by step and fail to realize that every system of government to be practiced in a nation has to be in conformity with the culture and tradition of the people of that nation. I'm not saying democracy is not good for Nigeria. What I'm saying is that it should be practiced in Nigeria in line with our cultural system, not step by step as other nations practice it. It's annoying to see our land polluted with foreign or questionable cultures and abandon our heritage. Nigerian youth are abandoned and unrecognized like David, yet the anointing of restoration is upon them. The power to make the difference is upon them. Other countries saw what we could not see in our youth and they invite them to their country using their skill to develop their home web base. I read through a newspaper some times ago. 
A government official was describing our youth as imbecile and useless. I felt it's an abuse and impediment on the true image of Nigerian youth. The great Nigerian youth I've ever known, educated or uneducated, are great minds. They are vivacious towards achieving goals. They are filled with vitality and highly precocious. Nigerian youth are filled with great dreams that can turn Nigeria into a giant nation of the world. Highly creative, energetic, among the world class, endurance, peace lover, passionate to survive, industrious, and above all, they are the future leaders. The noise says of the leader that the Nigerian youth are lazy is not true. My close move with all class of Nigerian youth proved to me that we have the best manpower in our youth with great assets and innovations to glow Nigeria economically, socially, and politically. Nigerian youth became what they are now because they have been frustrated and left to survive by any means. My second national call goes to the entire nation to recognize the great importance of our youth in finding solutions to our national problem. We need to give them the opportunity that we enable them to channel the right cause towards change. Let's cry it aloud. Nigeria in the midst of world nation has resources that other nations envy. I believe you are blessed by this message. There are other powerful messages like helping the solution of Nigeria from home, seven principles of David to national assignments. For further information on this message or booking Shion Ashimolo as guest speakers, you can call 080-3081-2841 or 080-230-47171 or visit our website www.businessclinic.com.ng or send email to info at businessclinic.com.ng or shinwashimolo at gmail.com. God bless you.